All right, so I'm going to get more into um, the idea of a rate of change um, of a function. And what that really is is a, a ratio between the change in what you're graphing on the y-axis and uh, relative to the, the change in what you're graphing on the x-axis. So there are different kinds of rates of change, three, three sort of standard categories. There's a positive rate of change. That's when the x-axis variable is increasing when the uh, when the y-axis variable is increasing as the x-axis variable increases, um, or if you if you want to just look at a, a graph um, with x and y, um, as as you're going left to right on a on a coordinate plane, the x's are increasing. You, know, you start with one, two, three, four, five, or whatever your scale is, and same thing with y. You start down here, it's increasing. So a positive rate of change be the y's are are going up when the x's are going up, so it look like, like that or that. Um, a negative rate of change is the y variable is decreasing as x um, increases. So as you go left to right, the y's are, are dive bombing like that. So um, And then a zero rate of change is y just stays what it is no matter what x does, so something like that. So decipher this jumble over here. Um, and I want to just talk about three semi-real world examples. Um, here's a rate of change, 200 miles per, uh, per two hours. So that means f every two hours, um, I'm increasing my distance by 200 miles. So say like I, I start here, um, and I'm, I'm running very quickly that way and I could measure my distance away from my starting point you know every hour so maybe after one hour I'm a uh, hundred miles away etc so I could graph this um, a little coordinate plane here I'll have um, time in hours on the x axis and um, distance in miles on the y axis and so for every hour, every two hours, excuse me, I'm, um, so if I'm increasing two hours here, then my y is increasing um, 200 miles. So here would be a point here. So let's call that 200. So I'm going up 200 every time I go over um, two. And you could reduce that down to 100 miles per one hour, or as we say, 100 miles per hour, um, 100 miles per hour, so MPH. So uh, here's another um, rate of change here, negative 10 gallons per three minutes. So I'm imagining like a giant um, tank or something like that with, let's say, um, water in it. That's real original. And so we've got this big make kind of like a cone shaped thing. It's got water in it. Let's pretend. Um, you'll do these in calculus in a few years. Don't worry. It'll be fun. So we're measuring how much water this tank has and every three minutes it loses 10 gallons. This is a negative rate of change because that y variable is going down. So maybe um, so if we do minutes on the x-axis and gallons on the y-axis Maybe it starts out um, at 100 gallons full. Okay, so let's say that point is 100. Um, if I've gone three minutes, then it's gone down to 90. And if I go another three minutes to six, it's gone down to 80. Okay, so you'd see a, that what's called a negative slope on that. Um, I've got another negative ra uh, rate of change for you. This is negative 54 meters per second. And actually, a little side note, uh, if you want to impress your friends, that is the terminal velocity of a skydiver, meaning the maximum speed that a skydiver reaches dropping to the earth, where uh, the wind resistance actually um, matches the, uh, the downward velocity, the downward force of gravity, I think it is. Um, not sure if that's quite right. Check out the physics packets and, l and learn some physics. But I think that's right. So, um, but let's graph it. So that means I am 
measuring time in seconds and I'm measuring distance in meters and I am so if I start up here every second I'm dropping another 54 meters so so here I've gone down another 54 meters and here I've gone down another 54 meters so that'd be a negative rate of change the y-axis variable is decreasing while the x-axis variable is increasing and then here we have a constant um, I imagine may, I, don't know, I have no idea why you would ever want to do this but pretend like you're measuring the distance between two buildings as a function of time so say the distance between them is 35 feet you could draw a graph with um, let's measure it in days your time in days and then um, days and then a distance so um, after one day it's still 35 feet after two days it's still 35 feet after three days it's still 35 feet after a billion days it's still 35 feet you know if the houses are still there so that's there's no rate of change it's it's a the distance is constantly 35